that internet login page was um, easily recreated um, by just copying the HTML and CSS from the normal internet login page. The only thing that was changed was when you click the submit button, it linked to a local PHP file on a server. Uh, that PHP file, all it did was acquire your email. So I have a list of emails of people who <laughs> submitted their information. Do not worry, we did not get your passwords. Um, but you could have. I could have, yes, easily. With just uh, one extra line of PHP, I could have just gotten your uh, passwords. And if I had wanted to, logged into your internet, deleted a bunch of stuff. And I'm sure most people use the same password for the internet as their email and personal email and some other stuff. As bank accounts. And bank account and all that stuff. Yeah. It could have been rich. <laughs> yeah, it's also very limbo. <laughs> So that was uh, the simple um, how it was done. It's just a form, a PHP file program, and uh, 25 lines of PHP. Um, the next thing to, uh, to be done for that is just you need a server and a domain name that looks similar to ours. It wasn't too hard to get, probably not that expensive either. Someone is willing to go that far, he can dish out $30 for that and then Get, I don't know how many how much money you guys have on your bank accounts, but probably enough to pay for that server and extra. Um, and yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, to uh, so that this doesn't happen again, uh, what you guys should do is just be wary wary of emails like this, especially the ones asking you to change your passwords, the ones asking you for bank account numbers, all of that. Any financial information is or even personal information is, can be potentially dangerous. Um, another thing to uh, look at is before you click a link on an email, look where it's going. Um, we like try to make this uh, a little bit tougher by getting a URL that looked similar to the internet, but some people just don't even worry about it. They just can get a static IP or whatever and just redirect you and most people don't even look. Um, as for another thing, something that uh, could be done to improve this hack if we wanted to, because um, right now we got maybe 10 people from 10 students um, and, and staff. And staff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'll put this there. <laughs> technically. Um, the thing that uh, could be done to improve this phishing attack is to launch it at night or during a weekend when people can't respond as fast or as easily. Um, another thing that could have been done is just make it a little bit more real by just creating another fake page that will change your password. Um, just a little simple form that doesn't go anywhere and people wouldn't have asked um, what is going on as fast. Um, and just a little simple stuff like saying your password will be in effect in two days or mm -hmm. whatever, so people don't ask questions for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, we. I think that's pretty much it. Anything else? Does anyone have any questions? I have one question. <laughs> yes, Daniel. Uh, whose uh, emails did you get? Um, should we say this out loud? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, you have the order too. I do have the order. <laughs> Uh, the timestamps. So uh, first, we tested it with uh, Julian. Uh, we got your email. Uh, then came William, Praline, Guillaume, <laughs> Joe, uh, Joe Green, uh, uh, Sifan, Praline again, <laughs> <laughs> Tessie, uh, Z, John Serrano, John Serrano, <laughs> Eric Saul. And John Serrano again. <laughs> so this all happened within uh, 15 minutes. After those 15 minutes, Julian um, posted his second follow-up email saying, do not click the link. Uh, like I said, if we had done this at night or during the weekend when Julian is less available, or if I had um, put something to say the password will be effective in two days or whatever, 
Uh, it could have gone for a lot longer and could have gone closer to 80%, 90% of people clicking the link and filling it all out. All right. Any other questions? How do you do to protect yourself? So, yeah, to protect yourself, um, the easiest, the first thing you do is be wary of all these links asking you to change password mm -hmm. or for those uh, that <coughs> information. The next thing to do is um, take a look at the link closely. Yeah. Uh, that can help a lot, usually. Uh, sometimes you also, uh, one thing that I can do, uh, that I usually do is, I actually save my logging. Even if I don't save my password, if I save my logging to my browser, if I go to a web page that's asking me to log in and my email is not there already, something is a little fishy. Uh, that's one way that I look at it. And the next thing is, I was talking to John Serrano uh, earlier today, is that um, when this type of stuff happens, uh, you have to be wary and uh, able to change your password fast so that uh, if your password does get hacked, uh, if it's a unique password, you only have to change one password. If you have uh, a password that's reused across multiple mm -hmm. uh, services, then you have to make sure to change all of those passwords. Yeah, so to unfile this, like, one thing is um, everybody should avoid to use the same password for all your services. That's like a no-go. That's why password manager are a good thing, especially now they are integrated into um, all devices and browsers, so you have no excuse. Another thing that you should try to do is to enable two-factor authentication. Uh, it's not possible yet on uh, Alberto's school intranet, though it's something we have in mind. But basically, passwords are, are dead, like they get stolen, they get brute force, guess. Um, sometimes there is database leak. Um, it's, not, it's not even your fault. So if you have a second factor authentication where you need a token or your phone to access your account, then the person is less likely to access your account. So that's another thing to have in mind. Other questions? So this was done in collusion with Julien? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah.